The very first thing I want to show you about building a mod or anything where you're using lithium-ion batteries is that you treat these with respect. Before I build anything with um, that's going to use a lithium-ion lithium -ion battery or any powerful battery that's dangerous, these can explode and catch fire, is I build a plastic model of it. This is just the handle off of a garden tool that was the right diameter and I cut it and filed it to the right length so that now I have a dummy 18650 battery. I can do anything I want to with this and I'm not going to hurt anything and it's not going to explode or catch fire. I recharge these lithium ion batteries outside on concrete. Actually I put it in a flower pot on concrete um, and I treat them very respectfully. I took this Radio Shack case and cut it up and uh, a C-sized battery holder, which I just wanted pieces of plastic out of it and the uh, and the, the guts to make a battery holder out of because I want to make this case the battery holder. So I have my positive in here epoxied in. It's, it's riveted to a piece of wood which I have then reinforced with epoxy. What we want to do right now is figure out where we're going to have our buttons and our LED and our atomizer and drill those holes. So let's do that. So I'm thinking it's going to be held like this. So I'm thinking the, bat the button's going to need to be right there. If I turn it over, yeah, that would be a good place for the button. Um, and I also need to make sure that when this sticks down inside, it's not going to interfere with the button. So we want to verify that too. So my button placement is going to be, I'm going to put the button right here. Now that we have the uh, opening for the switch, we can put the switch in place. And it goes down with this little nut. I also got the switch at Radio Shack. The thing I did not get at Radio Shack was, um, I didn't get the, uh, the little tips. I'll show you a little bit about those tips in a second. Let me do this first. So now the button's in place. Where should the LED go? I think I'll put the LED just below the switch so I can cover it with my hand if I want to or I can see it. So this is for my LED. And I'm just going to have just the tip of it sticking up, just like that. Now, one more hole we need to drill is for the actual atomizer cell, or the, the uh, battery connection for the atomizer. And it's going to go right there. I already decided that. It's just the perfect place for it. <laughs> There's really not a better place for it to go, I think. And plus, the way I made this battery connection is I took the guts from a C battery holder and wanted the spring, and I bent this part to go around here to make a good electrical connection with the ground portion of this battery holder, of the uh, atomizer holder, atomizer battery connection. So if I put it, hang on, this is backwards. The battery will go in so, and so the atomizer will go here. So that's where the hole needs to be, right there. There we go. Good.
Now we can see how the battery connection fits. It's going to go in this hole. As you can see, this hole is bigger than this. That's where we get these two washers. Now, one thing I've noticed about plastic box mods is a lot of them just epoxy the the battery connection to the atomizer straight into that plastic. Well, this is going to get hot. And I want to protect it from getting hot and I don't want that to melt. So, I'm going to I've decided to stack two washers. These will act as heat sinks to absorb the heat from here and also act as a little drip plate there, a little uh, extra deuce plate. I was going to use a brass uh, brad, a uh, uh, grommet, but I decided to go with these silver washers because I liked them better. And also two of them then exactly will space this correctly. That was my guess and it looks like my guess is going to be right. So that's where I'm going to put this. Now I can put the battery connection on the back There's the solder connection onto the ground of the tip with the two washers in place. I'm going to melt this uh, battery holder into a little bit of this plastic right here to hold it securely. Actually, I could use my fake battery and just melt it a little bit. There we go. Not too much. For the um, LED, I'm going to hot glue it into place. And I can go hot glue this and come back and show it to you because I don't... Uh, I don't want to bring my hot glue gun in here. But first I could uh, put this resistor on. Now the resistor goes on the positive lead of the LED, which is the longest leg. Well, I'm just going to make a nice mechanical connection. Always make a mechanical connection and then a solder connection. If you've seen my other electronics videos, you'll know my old clippers have just about had it. <laughs> okay, so there's the resistor in place. I'm going to go hot glue this. Oh, we've got some massive sunlight coming in the window now. But um, I wanted to show you I've kind of decided to do something that's a little different than what I'd planned. You know, the resistor needs to go... The, the 5 volts, the 5 volts, the 3.7 volts from the battery comes up to one side of this button. Like this. Here, let me show you on macro. The positive battery connection comes up from the battery and goes to one side of the switch. The other side of your push button switch, the other side of the, other side of the push button switch, <laughs> say that five times fast, there's a the LED is going to have its positive lead come up with a resistor and tie into this other side. That will make the LED light. Then you need a wire from the positive, the second side of the push button to the center port of the atomizer battery connection, which I told you I got the uh, one with the hole in it so I'd be able to solder straight into that hole. I've decided to use, instead of adding another wire, just use the wire from the resistor. I'm just going to feed it through the second side of this battery connection and straight up through the hole on here and solder that through for my positive for my atomizer battery connection. So let's get this going here. I just want to feed this up into the switch. So I need to cut it off about there.
mechanical connection, then solder connection. Always mechanical connection, then solder. Never just use solder to hold things together. Always make it mechanical. That's my rule. That's my rule that I learned in school. Okay, so now we've got that uh, one side of the switch wired. Now we want to, I've wired the uh, battery, the <laughs> battery. I've put the resistor into one, the other side of the switch and I'm going to use the remainder of the resistor wire to solder into the atomizer battery holder, battery atomizer connection. So I'm going to strip off some insulation from this wire to use in lieu of heat shrink. Okay, now, so now I fed that uh, piece of insulation onto the wire, I can put it up through the middle and solder it to the tip because I'm using that hollow point um, atomizer battery connector. So there it is and it's perfect. Okay, so um, all that's left is to run a ground wire from here to here. So here we want, on the other side of our LED, we want mechanical connection, which will mean wrapping this around here. Always mechanical connection and then solder. Now I just need to solder this up to here, and it's finished. Of course I will wring it out um, to make sure everything's cool. I'll put my battery in here in case this comes loose, that uh, when I solder this in, that if that comes loose I'll still have a good, I'll still have it in the correct place. So let's see, where can I make a mechanical connection? right here on this battery clip. Okay, mechanical connection, then solder. That's it. Continuity checker, it should beep. Okay, good. We're ready to try it, except that uh, I do, I'm going to epoxy everything in to make sure nothing at all gets disturbed, but for now let's just try it and see what happens. There we go, that'll work. My violet LED. So there you have it.